Welcome to the very last show of the Dow Pod in 2020, and it is a special, special edition of the show. It is, of course, our Whammy Awards. But before we get into the good, the bad, and the ugly of wrestling in 2020, and uh, we have all three of those covered, uh, we just want to send a special thank you to every single person who has listened to the show supported the show by whether it be a like a retweet or you know leaving reviews or actually subscribing to the shows on apple pods or following on spotify whatever it may be a big big thank you to you guys because we've seen a lot of change on the show this year Uh, anthony came in as co-host back in april i think it was and of course that well that changed the show massively for the better and um project dits was also born this year so um the dits on wrestling podcast was kind of swallowed up into into that little bubble and again i think for the better and you guys have stuck around for all of that and very very appreciative of all of you every single one of you especially as we come to the end of the year now this this being the last episode of 2024 is um and our listenership is just going up and up and up and up and i don't know what we're doing right but like we we do massively uh appreciate every single one of you it's been a fucking terrible year um in in real life in wrestling um both of those put together uh it's it's been a it's been a struggle but hopefully 2021 is a bit more of a bright spot and we can actually <laughs> can actually have a little bit of positivity in the in the world in general and in wrestling because it's a wrestling podcast, so we'll focus on that. Um, Anthony, before we get into the Whammy Wars, uh, do you want to share any of your uh, thoughts? Oh, I just had a question on the follow. This this is a wrestling podcast. I mean, it's, it's up for interpretation. I think. I think I'm on the wrong podcast. <laughs> This is not uh, this is not disguised coverage, my friend. Is this not a <laughs> financial analytics podcast? Um, Do you want no, it to I be? <laughs> can, can we change everything? I mean, I, we did say big dits. changes were coming in twenty twenty one. True. <laughs> Welcome to the Dits on Financial Analytics podcast. Um, no, yeah, I think I've been lucky enough to join this podcast. As a permanent co-host, I was pumped as hell when you asked me to join, and it wasn't just because I was getting away from the wrestling thing and going in a different direction with my solo pod. And so this that this opportunity opened up for the at the same time that I started doing that. And I love recording with you and what we get to do on this pod. And to piggyback on what you said, like the support and the success we've had here on the Dow pod, it's been, it's been super rewarding. We do, we do a lot of things on this pod and a good 90% of them are from your brain. And they are as much as we joke about it and make a lot of underhanded comments about a lot of the shit that we get from different people and different accounts and things. (laughs) What we do on this show is I think very unique. I think it's very original. We do a combination of different things. And again, most of these, the things that we do are all you know, the the brainchild in some way or form from you. We've interviewed some great people this year. We've had some, just even that, like Rich from WrestleCrate and Mike from RetroSoft Studios. Yes. Those were both like so enlightening and eye-opening. And we got to talk to two awesome dudes who do great things in the wrestling community and are doing great things in the world. Two of our biggest that, episodes as well. That is two of our biggest episodes. Maybe that's so- a sign of things to come could be a sign of things to come and on top of that to do you know the worst so-and-so pay-per-view ever and to do yes. the fantasy booking and everything that we did on top of the regular like what's going on in the wrestling world and what we like and what's good and what to stay away from and reviews and topics and all these things we've done so much and we've done such a variety of things on this show and in some ways it can be detrimental to listens or viewership because if you know you're not hitting a particular niche or a particular area or cornering a certain part of the market so to speak it's easy to lose listeners or downloads or viewership however you want to quantify it and i think with the success that we've seen with the dow pod i I think what's tremendously rewarding in it for me 
and I know for you as well, is the fact that our numbers have stayed steady and then it climbed and climbed and climbed. And because we do a variety of things, I, I personally like to think that the reason our numbers do good is because, you know, the people are buying what we're selling and what we're selling at the end of the day is you and I. So I am tremendously thankful and appreciative for everything. Like you said, the listens, the viewership, the support, the retweets, the likes, the comments, anything we, you, you throw a tweet out of, Hey, we're looking to do this in the next episode. You know, what's your thoughts? And people respond and give their questions, their thoughts, their comments, concerns, people vote on things, just everything. It's, it's, it's been a, a nice bright spot in, like you mentioned, the, pile of shit that 2020 has been for so many reasons and especially being a wrestling fan 2020 has been a dark time for wrestling in addition to the dark times of the world so it's nice to have that little bit of reward in there for us and i'm thankful to be a part of the dow pod i'm excited for what 2021 has to offer and i wonder how our listens will do when we switch to financial analytics <laughs> i can't wait me neither. I'm super excited. I got my calculator <laughs> and other stuff needed to do financial analytics. Got abacus, got a, a thesaurus. I don't know why I'll need that, but I got it anyway. Yeah, dictionary. <laughs> I got I got a mop and uh, and a blender. <laughs> I've got my fingers. I'm ready to do okay. some counting. Let's do it. So Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I, it's, it is cliche to go, oh, 2021 is our year, blah, 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 but... I, I do think that when we've because we've you know we've taken a break now until 2021. Um, I do think we're going to come back stronger with a more clear view of what this show is and what this show can be um, because it is doing well now. I think it could do better. Um, I, I, I think everybody always has to have that mindset. You know, if you if you don't, then why why sell? Like, if you think you can yes. do better, go for it. Push. Push, 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 push. And that's what we're going to do in 2021. We're going to hit you hard. Um, right in the face. Right in the face. Pow, right, right in the, the kisser. Face. Pow, right in the kisser. 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 But we want to end 2020 in a way only the Dow Pod can. And that is by hitting you almost literally with the 2020 Whammy Awards. Whee! Hello and welcome to the 2020 Whammy Awards. Woo. I wore my best suit for this one. We're all dressed up. No, I realize no one can see us. Whammy. Whammy. Yeah. So stupid. <laughs> Whammy. It's going to be uh, just uh, a disclaimer. There will be a lot of whammying going on in this Whee! episode. Whammy. Whammy. You made my tortoise turn his head. And that's not a sexual innuendo. Oh, that's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> We're not quite there yet. I didn't take enough of a breath before I hit the whammy. I died out of the end, but I did, I did, I did my best. <laughs> but, I think yeah. I might go with the Meltzer voice whammies this time. No more whammy. I might just go with the whammy. Nice. Yeah. Nice. That might be now you got to switch it up. You can't just... Oh, no, you can't, you can't just no, keep the it. High, the high voice whammy might have been... You know, that was a 2019 Wham. whammy. This is the 20... Oh, whammy. Oh, get whammy. This is the 2020 whammies. New and improved. New and improved. We've Much upgraded better. carrier pigeons. Exactly. Been better feeding upgrade. them uh, a better sourced bird seed. Yes, a better diet after the whole fiasco and pigeon massacre of 2019 that we had to endure. For those of you who don't know what that is, feel free to check out the 2019 Whammy Awards. Uh, it's not something I really want to rehash due to the emotional turmoil and heartbreak that it'll put us through. But rest in was, peace. Uh, rest in peace. There was... Uh, you know, we learned the hard way that or yeah, pieces. Well, whatever they found in the sea. You know, we found out that uh, 
carrying heavy trophies via carrier pigeon across the Atlantic Ocean is less than ideal for said pigeon. And But here we are. That's 2019. This is 2020. New and improved. Yes. And we're looking at the good, the bad, and the ugly yep. of wrestling in 2020 without delving in too much into backstage stuff because we're aware of that. We know the year's been terrible. You guys know that as well. Um, yeah, like I can't believe it's I can't believe it's been a year since we did the last set of Whammy Awards. It's crazy. Like so much has happened for the show over the last year. But you know, of course, we alluded to that in the uh, in the opening. Jerry Springer would have been proud of that. He would have. He's a huge fan of the show. Big, 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 big. So is uh, Cody Rhodes and Cody. Yes, uh, Vince yeah. occasionally pops in. I know he does. Um, I think Rusev gave us a go at some point. Brandy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mickey Mouse. Oh, Mickey Mouse loves it. He was on the show. He was on the show. He less than he less than was. <laughs> he was on the show in 2020. Big year. Like we got Mickey Mouse on this friggin' show. You know how hard it is to book Mickey Mouse. You know how much legal red tape and hoops that you have to jump through to book that guy. Man. Especially, uh, I think it was around launch of Disney Plus as well. He was a busy guy, and he still came along. I think he was, yeah. He's counting money hand over fist, or I guess glove over glove. And the fact that he took the time to come on the show and be a friend of the show, well, he's still kind of a friend of the show. He was a little perturbed when he came on. But it's been a big year. Big deal. We've made a lot of strides here on the Dow Pod. <laughs> and as, as as much as the year has been terrible, there has been some really good wrestling. Yes. But there has also been some really bad wrestling. And we're here to celebrate both. Yes. <laughs> both ends of that spectrum. You can't have the good without the bad because the bad makes you appreciate the good. Exactly. Exactly. It's yin and yang type of thing. Now, the way we've done the Whammy Awards this year is exactly the same as we did the Whammy Awards last year. We both came up with our own nominations and then between us decided um, who was more deserving of the awards. So probably like every other award show ever in existence, we followed suit. Now, <laughs> that's the only, it's the only time we will not be original on this show. And we want to kick things off with a good award. You don't want to, you don't want to start, start things off on a bad note. No, you really no, don't. It's, 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 you really don't. And we're going big with the first ooh. award of the 2020 Whammy Awards. Best storyline. This was tough. There's been a lot keep of good storylines. Disclaimer, we are keeping this majority, not even majority, primarily between the WWE, AEW sort of universes. We recognize yes. we talk about a lot of different things on this show for the regular listeners of the show. You know, I'm a massive, massive New Japan fan, but as things have gone through, and we recognize with all due respect to other promotions, these awards are primarily for the WWE and AEW universes. Yes. So before you want to throw out, you be like, no, like I think, you know, Kazuchika Okada is the best wrestler. I, we understand that, but <clears throat> not in the universe of the qualifications for which we are going yes. on this year's whammies. Because last year was only WWE. We've inco- Correct. And we've incorporated AEW into this this year. So, As you have incorporated some AEW into your wrestling viewership and your scope has thus broadened and expanded. And now we're able to do more fun things. This is very, very true. And New Japan. Wait. So maybe next year the Whammy Awards will be even bigger. Ooh, we're going Ooh. We're going on multiple continents next year. Yes. Ooh, across yes, the yes, Pacific. Yes. Going, world, going worldwide. So the nominations... The best storyline of 2020 are Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Otis, and Ziggler. That whole it's not well, it's not a triangle; it's a a square. Um, yep. But pr- primarily the Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville stuff. Uh, Kenny props, Omega props to them for the longevity of that. Oh, angle. absolutely, yes. Yeah. Uh, Kenny Omega, Hangman Page. Yes, the Bray Wyatt Alexa Bliss angle, which is still continuing as we as we speak, um, the Bailey Sasha saga again, a, another piece of long term booking, uh, sometimes yes. frustrating but a great payoff. The Legend Killer storyline with Randy Orton, and finally, head of the table, the Tribal Oop. Chief, 
Roman Oof. Reigns. So essentially Oof. the Roman Reigns heel turn. Oof. And the winner is... So much drama. Roman Reigns, head Oof. of the table. I am... I am shocked. Still, the WWE has gone in this direction. And I'm almost equally shocked with how much I have enjoyed this storyline. I admittedly, I don't watch WWE live or like regularly. I record everything every week and then, you know, I'll get to it here and there. But without fail, I at at the very least check in to see what's going on with that storyline and what direction they're going to go in. And I continue to see things that I'm just like, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's a good angle. It also helps that Reigns has had Paul Heyman attached to him, but they are really, for as much as I knock WWE, and I do that a lot because I think a good majority of their product is terrible, and it upsets me as a wrestling fan, and it makes me embarrassed to say that I'm a wrestling fan. They have nailed almost every single piece of this storyline from the just the plot of the matches, the plot of the storyline, the booking, the just the way that Reigns has really mastered that tribal chief head of the table role and what it could potentially be leading to the addition of Paul Heyman, the introduction of Paul Heyman, how they did it in that episode of SmackDown. It's just been really, really good, really, really spot on. And I think, I think it's the type of storyline too, that if, if this was in NXT or AEW, everybody would be talking about how it's like the greatest thing in the last like 10 years, it would get more a, a claim and more shine if it wasn't a pure WWE thing, but regardless, it deserves it, and that's why it has won our best storyline. And I know you're a huge fan as well. Massive fan. In fact, we dedicated an entire episode to this about yes. two months ago. That's how good it is. Um it I'm really behind in wrestling at the moment because life got in the way. Um so I'm still playing catch up to this day. However, I always hop onto YouTube and see where the rain stuff is going. That's the one storyline at the moment that I am just constantly checking up on. If if there's one thing I have to keep tabs on every week, if I if I'm weeks behind, if I'm missing stuff, that is the one thing I'm checking in on because it is just being done to perfection. And it's it's sad that we have to be so surprised that something this good can come from WWE. And you know, you know me. Anthony and the listeners will know t- at this point if you've been around for a while you know I'm very very much um institutionalized to the WWE way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but that doesn't mean I don't criticize it and I think because I've been in that little bubble for so long you know I I kind of understand where things are going wrong where things are going right and they are I, not one single moment in this storyline has there's not been a blip not a single blip and that is a surprise especially like wwe 2020 not having a single blip having that continuity going every single week and every little bit that you're adding to it whether it be obviously roman reigns came back we didn't know whether he was a heel or a face and then, yes, we it kind of revealed that he was a heel because he, he had this, like, rough style. And then Paul Heyman was then added to it. They ran with it. They did great with it. Then they added Jey Uso into the mix. They have ran with it. They've hit, every, they've hit it out of the park every single week. They've kind of added Jimmy in there every now and then. But every time he's had a spot to play, it's been done well it's been very mm-hmm. small but obviously he's injured so there's not really much he can do um mm-hmm. and then you look at the opponents that he has that he's had as well and at the moment he's well even the drew mcintyre stuff that was so short-lived because it was just a survivor series thing that was done so well and the kevin owens stuff that's going on right now is fantastic so for me i mean i say nothing comes close like there are some really really good nominees mm-hmm. on this list but nothing has had the impact for me um admiral and for you and for so many people even the shock factor that we we have of heel roman reigns to begin with um yeah nothing nothing comes close to roman reigns head of the table for me the tribal chief 
I will agree. Well deserved. I'm, sh- I'm shocked I'm saying it. I, I think a, cl- uh, a, a good two for me is I really like the longevity and the storyline of the Kenny Omega, Adam Page storyline. But again, to WWE's credit, I still can't believe I'm saying it. Yeah, they've nailed pretty much everything. I haven't come away being like, well, here you go. Like, now it's going to lose steam and now it's <laughs> going to suck. Nope, it just keeps continuing to get better and or at the very least stay good which is something that wwe has a hard time doing they tend to get in their own way or shoot themselves in the foot and instead here they just continue to prosper with this storyline and props to them and props to roman and Heyman and everything and hooray for wrestling you love to see it love it love to see it why not whammy whammy and there it comes and there it comes and you you get the uh you get the honors of doing the next award oh boy which is the cringe award yes yes several nominees as there were in our best storyline category but obviously for less than ideal scenarios because if you're cringe worthy that's not a good thing and our nominees for this year's 2020 cringe award and the 2020 whammies our nominees are the eye for an eye moment with <laughs> I can't even say it without just like laughing at myself how stupid that was. Eye for an eye. So with Seth Rollins and Rey Mysterio. Uh, Braun Strowman's descent into madness. I'm a monster. God, I can't. Who writes that? And again, that's the other side. Like, how can the Reigns thing be so good? And then on the other, oh, it's just bad. Um, <laughs> the Lana bully angle. Again, less than mm. ideal. <laughs> Retribution. Not one specific moment, just everything. It's all cringe. <laughs> and the Buddy Murphy, Aaliyah Mysterio love slash relationship slash moments. Just, oof. Slash something. <laughs> yeah, just, oh. Just, so those five just... nominees for this year's Cringe Award for the 2020 Whammies. And the winner of the Cringe Award in the 2020 Dow Pod Whammies is... Buddy Murphy and Aaliyah Mysterio. Oh, oh boy. Yikes. The kiss sealed it. Gross. The kiss sealed it. She's like 12 or whatever she actually is, <laughs> and he's a fully grown man, and it's weird. And it also doesn't make sense storyline-wise. Like, even the thing that made her, like, like him, which is, like, weird. And then they're, like, sharing text messages, and it's it's just all cringy and uncomfortable and weird on oh, so many levels and forced yeah just and then it's also cringy too to think that like i don't know what goes on behind the scenes but like the fact that ray mysterio was just like cool <laughs> with this angle or like about it to let to like let his wife and daughter be brought into this storyline <laughs> and then put like it's just weird. It, it, which is why it wins the cringe award. I can't even <laughs> speak about it without just like it makes me so uncomfortable. I, oh god. I, I mean, it, there's a lot that comes uh, that, that comes close in this. Uh, the eye for an eye. The the the, the, the moment that Mysterio and I'm gonna. I, you can't see it, but the air quotes are up here. Um, lost his eye. Ridiculous. <laughs> ridiculous. Just ridiculous. And then you had, oh, and then you had, uh, <laughs> you had Seth Rollins like shocked. He was like, <laughs> yeah, and he was, he was like cross-eyed and sideways with yeah. his head. He's like, yeah, and you're just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> and we, we talked about this off air. Uh, this is another appearance for Seth in the cringe area. He and Becky Lynch won it last year. For, they did. For their cringy relationship storyline angle. And this year we get another nomination for seth in this category and another relationship angle that wins and it's just it's just so the eye for an eye thing was bad in and of itself for that specific moment and this and that was definitely up there granted everything here that we've listed all the nominees were up there but that eye for an eye was just really cringy just for the outlandish ridiculous nonsense that it truly was but this buddy murphy and Aaliyah mysterio angle just the fa- as soon <laughs> <laughs> I remember what was I had it on and I don't again I don't usually watch raw live on like a Monday but I had it on and I saw 
Murphy just get chucked to the outside or whatever happened. And Aaliyah, like, walks by him and, like, kneels and, like, touches his shoulder and then just, like, walks in the ring. And right then and there, I was like, no fucking way (laughs) are they going to have this adult man start a relationship with this very young girl. And I was like, there's no way that's where this is leading. My thought was potentially, oh, okay, you know what? They're going to play some more mind games. They can still recover. Buddy's going to try and, like, get her to be infatuated with him so he and Seth can continue, you know, to destroy the Mysterios. Okay, nope, that's not it. Instead, we've got this (laughs) weird Romeo and Juliet scenario that WWE is trying to book over here, and it's just not... Even just from the optics level, like, she... Well, granted, she is young. I think she's, like, 18 or 19. Something like that, yeah. But she looks young. Like, she genuinely looks young. Buddy Murphy, I think, is, like, in his early 30s, but he looks like he's 40. (laughs) Like, and it's a shame for me because I've been banging the drum for years for Buddy Murphy. I think if he was allowed to, to run, he'd be one of the top 10 wrestlers in the world. I think he's fantastic. And the fact that he's in this stupid love angle with a girl who just got out of preschool is just wild to me. <laughs> definitely, just definitely deserving of the cringe award. It's just absolutely. Hold on, because now, now I'm now I'm on the internet. I am I am in it. Hold on here. Buddy Murphy is okay. He's thirty two. Aaliyah Mysterio is nineteen, and she just turned nineteen. Oof. Yeah. Yeah. I just cringe. <laughs> she's out there like taking even if you Google it, like she one of one of the top things is that like this image of like him wearing the suit coat and he's like holding her like to his chest after she like comes out and like hugs him or whatever after he like talk it, it's just I don't even want to talk about it. It's so stupid and bad. <laughs> Well deserved, well winner, I guess, loser, it's winner just... of the Cringe Award, Buddy Murphy, Elia Mysterio. Congratulations! There is a carrier pigeon en route to deliver. I hope they don't interrupt any uh, inappropriate stuff. Um, you may make the carrier pigeon cringe, which will actually have a knock-on effect with the rest of the award. So please don't do anything like that. Um, just yeah, bad. Bad, 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 bad. But I get the honours of writing the the wrongs of the the cringe here. And um, a new award to the whammies, because we got rid of the comedy award, because 2020 has been far from comical. Um, We've replaced it with Breakout Star. Mm. And there's been some breakout stars this year. And I'm going to say them now. These are the nominees for the... Breakout Star 2020, Jey Uso, Kyle O'Reilly, Pat McAfee, Darby Allen, and Dominic Mysterio. And Aaliyah Mysterio. (laughs) No, not really. Just Dominic. And the winner is... McAfee. Mm. Cool for this one. I, I like this one. You know what I really like about this? He's a non-wrestler. Yes. He's a fan, which I like, but he's a non-wrestler. He's Former had, NFL football player. Yes, and he's had two matches this year. That's it. And I like... Look how much he's achieved in just yes, that's two it. matches. That's it. The fact that one... He's wrestled multiple times and hasn't looked – not only has he not looked like a fish out of water, he's done well. And considering the high-profile level of what he was doing, great on the mic. Very good well, on the mic, yeah. Tremendous on the mic. Well above average in the ring. I mean, the fact that he he competed in a War Games match. (laughs) This is a match that, and I understand it's under the WWE umbrella now, but this is a match that WCW made famous that was the Horsemen 
and Dusty Rhodes and the Steiners and Sting and Luger and the Legion of Doom and just this is a big time match at least for me personally and he captained one of the teams in it <laughs> and he did a moonsault through a table and he took some good bumps he didn't look bad the storyline was good yeah man like when do you see you just see somebody have that kind of impact and again breakout star we're going with you know, people who just kind of came out of nowhere and impressed you in all fairness to everybody else dominic mysterio i think was really up there again this whole list you know dominic and darby and kyle and jay uso and jay uso for being able to kind of be propelled a bit onto the main event stage in a singles capacity that was yeah. really cool and dominic kind of coming out of nowhere and being able to legitimately prove himself in the ring but both of those guys well really everybody on this list but pat have been training in wrestling or been in wrestling for a very long time. And Pat McAfee has not. And for the level of impact that he has had and the quality that he's delivered, all things considered, that's why we picked him. And it's, he's really tremendous. Yeah, no brainer, really. Um, I mean, like you said, like everybody in this, you know, is in for a shout. That's what, I mean, that's why we've, we've nominated them in the first place. But it, it really is a case of you have a guy that, on paper should be so green and i'm talking lacey evans last year green uh, maybe even 2020 lacey evans green but um <laughs> like he's he is just a natural I, I remember watching it in the adam cole match that he had and just so, like let's just put the moves to one side because i i was about to say anybody could do a fucking moonsault um i cannot but the fact that he was like he's he's very athletic, which is you know hardly surprising considering his 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 background. Um, but some of the moves he was doing, fantastic stuff. But his psychology, like he understood mm -hmm. everything. He knew the moments when to when to taunt and when to apply rest holes, or like just every little tiny thing that comes with it. I you know I admittedly haven't seen the War Games match. I've seen like the odd thing here or there, and. I, Correct me if I'm wrong. Did he duck a dive off the top of the thing as well? Yeah. You know, like... Yes, geez, he like, did. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's crazy. Like, it, it's just... This is a guy that's going to emulate Shane McMahon. He's going to be jumping off a of Hell in a Cell in like two or three years' time. He might be. And I think what's what's good too, like he... He's not just in there. I know we're going to talk... I mean, we already have, but we've talked about the spots. But he's done more than that. Like, it's not just like, yeah, well, he did this moonsault and he did this. And then, like, he sat in the corner for an hour and everything else happened. No, like, he did multiple things. And, again, this is a guy who's not, like, he didn't grow up in the business. He just likes wrestling and is athletic and didn't come in. And I, we, we've seen other people come in and, like, what was it, um, the dude from Arrow or whatever with Cody all those years ago, Robbie uh, Amell, yeah. I think. Um, we've seen, like, Robbie Amell. We've seen... Shaq we've seen Lawrence Taylor back in the day in the 90s like guys come in and they just they don't look right or they do like one thing and it's like ooh, kind of cool but it's not like functioning within a match this they put Pat McAfee with arguably the biggest star in NXT and he held his own and did not look terrible mm -hmm. and was able to further a storyline and engage an audience and hold his own I'm not saying he's the best worker. I'm not saying he should stick to wrestling full time and become champion or anything like that. But he is more than serviceable. And considering he just started doing it, and again, the psychology piece to know and have the ability to be like, I should do this now, or here's what I can do. It just, that's tremendous for a guy. And because again, I don't care how much, I don't care how athletic you are, I don't care how much you've watched wrestling. It's not easy what they do. And he's nailed it. And I, I think it's. I mean, correct. I mean, I don't know if you'll agree with me, but I, I see comparisons to Shane. I know I've already mentioned that, but Shane can put on a really good match if he wants to. You know, I, I, I mean, look back at uh, well, one of my well, well, my favorite match involves Shane McMahon. Um, yeah, exactly. Kurt, Kurt Angle, uh, King of the Ring, two thousand one, no, or Kurt. his Angle sucks. <laughs> yeah. or his um or his match against aj styles at wrestlemania 32 i think it was mm -hmm. um like he can still wrestle even at this he, period and he he can't he, punch he can't put oh no he cannot punch for stuff. shit yeah, but he, he gets, a good but he gets he can... it he gets it and that, i think 
I think you could. I think there is a very, very easy comparison to be made between Pat McAfee and Shane McMahon. But at least even with Shane, though, but Shane again has been in it to some degree his whole life, and has been yeah, that's true. Trained a heavy amount more than Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee just showed up with a love and watchability factor, and just look where he is already. I hope we see more. Break, breakout star. Well deserved. Good. Yeah, so I'm, gl- I'm, gl- I'm glad we included. Yeah, I inclu- I'm glad we included this award because um, there's all there's always breakout stars. Always, he's deserving. He's deserving of this first time award win. Yes. A win. Um, stuff. Now you, you'll you'll start to see a pattern emerging here. We go with with one good award, and then we follow it up with the absolute opposite. So you have the honors. I get. Uh, all, I have all the worst ones. I, think... I just realized we continue to go. This is what happened last year. Fair enough. I accepted it. You have the honors of delivering the worst male whammy award. So worst male. This was tough, by the way. Yes, we narrowed it down to two. I know there's three in the script, but I'm going to mention only the main two for a variety of reasons. So worst male, unfortunately, an award that people don't want to win. Unless, I guess, someone aims to be the worst, but I don't think anybody. Hmm. Well, I mean, there's the worst wrestling podcast, so they aim to be that. So I guess that's fair. Came down to two individuals for us. Braun Strowman and Goldberg. Two gentlemen who (laughs) have not had a good 2020 (laughs) for their Hmm. in-ring work. And the winner... Of the 2020 Worst Male Whammy Award is... (laughs) Ditz's personal favorite (laughs) and personal hero, Braun Strowman. Yeah. Bad. Yeah. I... It's one of of those things. I've... There was a period where I was very, very high on Braun Strowman, and as is so often the case, the trigger wasn't pulled, and then it was just a downward spiral. They really missed the boat with him big yeah. time. Matt, like if if it gets to the point where you're pairing him with a three year old to win the tag team championships, like you oh, you have Nicholas. steered so far off the correct path that there is no going back no matter how many times you try and resurrect like certain um bits of his old character and like admittedly i can tolerate him in the role he's in now but he's still not somebody who i'm like oh yeah you know like he's had a good year he hasn't had a good year the whole the bray wyatt storyline uh not enjoyable not enjoyable at all and then his last minute inclusion into the um into the title picture the universal title picture i I mean that just came out of nowhere and i I mean yeah we've just we've just named the worst male of the year and he was universal champion this year for what three months Oh God! Too long. I mean, is the answer. Yeah, it's way too long. Way, way too long. Um, I just haven't enjoyed anything Braun Strowman related. Goldberg, he had what two matches this year? Ruined the Fiend. I mean, God. More, you might, you might as well just have squashed the guy. Um, yep. Also, and then they had a terrible inside. match against Braun for the whole thing at WrestleMania. Yep. Shocking. I mean. Yeah, just bad, bad all around, bad for both. I think what gets me more with both of these guys are the worst, not necessarily because they are inherently terrible. Am I a fan of like their workability and work rate and all those things? Not right now. No, and probably never. Actually, no. When I was a kid, I thought Goldberg was like the best thing ever. <laughs> um, and then I realized that he actually actually kicked Bret Hart in the head for real and ended his career. And that bothered me a lot and still does. But with both of these guys, and I'll start with Braun, I don't blame Braun as much as I do WWE. Braun is still very green, even for how long he's been in the business. He's still very green. And again, they had this guy who they could have capitalized on. He, For as much as we talk about guys who have organic runs that are successful, Braun organically got over, big time. 
And instead of capitalizing, like you said, and pulling the trigger, they didn't. They delayed. He cooled big time. And now they just – they had him – Oh, yeah, we'll just have him keep doing that thing where he runs around the ring and shoulder blocks somebody, which is so dumb because if the guy just stands there for a minute and a half while Braun <laughs> runs around the entire ring. And then we'll just have him say, get these hands a whole bunch, which is all he does. His finishing maneuver sucks, the power slam. It's not good. And they put him in these matches and scenarios and give him this dialogue that he should just not be given. And it's so frustrating to see... I was never a fan of, like, Braun Strowman. But if they would have put the title on him when he was hot, I would have completely understood. Yeah. He was super over. And it was exciting to a degree. Like, I don't care how campy or hokey it might be. It was kind of fun and kind of cool to watch him, like, rip a car door off. I was like, okay, I'm all right with that. Again, like, I'm not taking WWE to be the sport of wrestling like I do with New Japan. So I'll go, I'll go for this. And instead of capitalizing on it, they let him flounder around in obscurity so he could be fed to Roman Reigns. And then they finally decide to try and pull the trigger on him or do something different. And instead, they give him terrible matches, corny lines, bad situations. And he just fizzles out completely. And then he gets that horrible fiend cinematic match where he basically gets murdered at the end. (laughs) And, yeah, and then Goldberg on the other side, like, this 50-year-old man should not be in high-profile matches for titles and championships. You're just making everyone want to hate him. Especially against people with massive amounts of momentum yes like what do you it's not like you're just feeding especially against people that are protected yes you fed your like biggest weapon bray wyatt the fiend the guy that no one could beat you fed him to a retired guy (laughs) so you could get like extra money in saudi arabia that sucks that is terrible and again i understand the bottom line necessity of it but it was just bad to and, I mean, it also doesn't help that Goldberg was never the best in-ring competitor. And with age, he has only degressed. I think that's a word. Digressed? Degressed? I don't know. Whatever. He's gotten worse. <laughs> and, yeah, it, it – bad. Both bad. Unenjoyable. Not fun. Bad. Bad. <laughs> bad. Worst. They, they, they could be co-winners, to be honest. But it, it, really it has gone to – they can share yeah. it. We don't. We don't have the, the the carrier pigeon capacity, unfortunately, to give them both a shared uh, a shared award. So, Braun, you've got it. Enjoy. But there is a flip side to worst mail, and I have the honors of calling the best mail. And the nominees for the twenty twenty one Me Awards Best Mail Award are Roman Reigns, Drew McIntyre. John Moxley, Randy Orton, Keith Lee, and Hangman Page. And the winner... John Moxley. Whammy! 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 For, for transparency's sake, we... We were really torn between two people. Yeah, this, this was hard. <laughs> yes. But we have we our reasons. Torn. We have our reasons. I'll give. I'll, I'll. I'll let you go into. Do you want to go into the reason with your analysis? I mean, I'll. I'll. I'll go with the the rain side of things, the WWE Fair. side of things, Fair. because you know you've been the 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 AEW <laughs> constant. For I've this watched show. it once or twice, <laughs> <laughs> and I literally have watched it once or twice. <laughs> um... So Roman Reigns was a very, I'm, I'm, we're talking very, very close, um, second for us. When you look at the impact that Roman Reigns has had since he's come back from injury and we have this whole, you know, head of the table, tribal chief, heel turn, it nothing's perfect, but in terms of you know like personal preference and stuff you can give something a 10 and for me it is a 10 and for you i don't I, if it is, if it isn't a 10 it's pretty damn close to being a 10 just every, yes. like like we said with the best storyline award like everything has hit mm-hmm. massively well tens 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 the problem is it's over a short space of time yes he came back is. he came back at SummerSlam, which was what two and a half months ago three months 
Oh, it was SummerSlam. It what? Damn, I thought it was even. I thought it was like July or Backlash in June. Yeah, so it's even shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Fair. And do you think you can you cannot argue the the impact that he has made since returning? But you ha- we have to look at the bigger picture here. This is the 2020 Whammy Awards, not the back end of 2020 Whammy Awards. Uh-huh. So with that in mind, John yes. Moxley is the guy and i'll let you take over as to why we have gone with john moxley so if so it's not obvious sample. yeah well it's because you know we just like his army fatigue pants we think they're cool <laughs> so i like his hair i like <laughs> he's married to renee young and we like renee young. yeah we like renee um but i think the key there is the whole sample size aspect. I think, again, I think the Roman Reigns story and everything has been fantastic and what he's done has been great. It's hard for me to give someone a 10 whether or a perfect, whether it's a 5 out of 5 star rating or a 10 out of 10. Roman Reigns has been a, a 9, 9.5. He's crushed it. It's, it. it's ridiculous how well he's doing. But again, shorter amount of time, smaller sample size, less opportunity to fail, and also less moments of greatness, despite how great they've been. To your point, Moxley, and also I did not even say with Roman there. Same thing for Keith Lee. We've immediately thought about Keith Lee because he killed it in NXT, but since he's gone to the main roster, it's been terrible. Yeah. And we liked what Paige has done. Randy Orton has had some good moments. I mean, we 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 also didn't throw Kenny Omega in there, but Kenny's had some really great moments. But if you're looking at consistency, again, this is a whole year picture so forget about a one-off or a couple months or eliminate any recency bias of who's been killing it for the last you know four or five months or even two or three or whatever it's a holistic year view and from january 1st 2020 until december 31st 2020 john moxley has done fantastic in his promos he's done better than advertised in the ring he's had multiple feuds he's gotten the buy-in from the audience and the fans in a multitude of ways and again it's that sample size he may not have always been a nine and a half or a nine like reigns has been for these past two or three months or well actually august september it's like three four months but he's been like an eight and a half to a nine for 10 11 months and so that level of quality over the period of time is what gave us that decision there. And there you go, John Mox. Johnny Mox. That's a big award. That is a big award. That is it's a big crazy award. to think that it's two. I also never thought with this, I was never, I've said it multiple times on the show, Ambrose was my least favorite of the Shield. In ring, I, I would say. I thought he was slow. I thought his pacing was bad. I wasn't a fan, and I knew what he did in CCW, so I recognized him, recognized him as like a hardcore guy, but I never thought I'd like his like in-ring stuff. I wasn't a fan. And then he went to New Japan, and he was in the G1, and I was like, well, I'll see how this goes, and I was blown away. He did so much better than I thought, and maybe I was a little more impressed because I set the bar so low, but he did really great. And then I watched him go in AEW, and again, a variety of matches, a multitude of scenarios and opponents, and he just kept delivering. We always knew his promo work was great, but... Just to see where he is now and how far he's come and to show the – again, and it's, and it's not a knock against WWE. I never <laughs> saw him as the dude that could be like the flag bearer or torch carrier for a company. And here he is carrying the torch. I know he's lost to Kenny recently, but he was the standard in AEW for the very, very, very heavy majority of 2020 – and he's helped put him on the map, and he's been a great champion. He's been a great wrestler, and it's awesome to see where both he and Roman Reigns are right now, both just respectively killing it in their respective companies and respected you know, fields in which they are working right now. Yeah. Um, and he, well, he also won the PWI. Uh, number, oh, got, that's right. He did. As well, didn't he? he did. What you a know, good for, year for him. You know. I'm sure he'll appreciate this whammy win more than that. <laughs> That's it. That's if the uh, the pigeon gets there. I think you know we're a couple of awards in now. Yeah. He may not have made it, but the the, the bird seed may be helping him. The, the, we went yeah. organic this year. 
We did. We also laced it with a shit ton of amphetamines to <laughs> keep him awake for the trip and hopefully not crap. <laughs> but we'll find out in the coming days how he got on or didn't oh, get on, as the case may be. Um, <laughs> now, you have the honors of we go. delivering the worst yeah. tag team yeah. award for the 2020 Whammy Awards. Correct. Yeah. 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 Worst tag team. Pretty pretty self-explanatory. A not good tag team. A bad tag team. But the worst 20 tag team for 2020 will come down to one of these following teams that have been nominated. We've got Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler. We've got Mandy Rose and Dana Brooke. We've got Dolph Ziggler and Bobby Roode. I completely forgot that Bobby Roode even exists until seeing him mentioned on this list. (laughs) We've got Lucha House Party. Yep. And our boy Fox Dorado is awesome in that, though. (laughs) And the Forgotten Sons, who are their name alone is just so meme-worthy. So meme-worthy. And the winner of the 2020 Worst Tag Team here on the Dow Pod whammy awards goes to <laughs> Nia Jax and Shayna Baszler terrible just terrible just Nia is awful and I, I feel I feel bad saying that about anybody like I, I don't I don't mean to crap on someone's work and we do i know we do it a lot as well yes you know we we are very aware that we shit on naya a lot and we may get into that a a, a little later but Um, she's awful but we have yeah we have i think i think we have valid reasons i completely agree and we'll get into some of those reasons further potentially later in this episode but this she she's just bad and shayna is good but main roster shayna is awful. Aside from that one elimination chamber where she choked out everybody and looked like a beast, she's been booked terribly. We know Vince doesn't like her, and this tag team just has no juice, no heat, and it's what makes it suck even more is that they're the tag team champions. And there's <laughs> yeah. just no... And especially going from, like, you had the Kabuki Warriors. I can't believe I even said that name. That's such a stupid name. I'm not, I'm not referring to them as that name. Asuka and Kyrie. <laughs> awesome and then you've got sasha and bailey awesome even alexa bliss and nikki cross yeah i enjoyed cool. them and now it's naya and Shayna, and there's just no it just shows the state of tag team wrestling in general in wwe i i saw the thing recently i think it was bret hart that said it that he's heard word from people in WWE that like Vince is just off of tag team wrestling like he thinks it sucks and doesn't put any like effort or value into it and which makes sense like they just put the belt on two random people who don't fit who have no juice no flow nothing Nia is the worst and Shayna Shayna had no buzz no nothing and it's not like they put the belts on him to be like okay now we'll propel him forward nope they're still just middling away in obscurity and it's 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 a shame to Shayna especially because yeah. she was sweet in NXT and she had this great dominating run. Shayna two time, like just good. I never thought she was the best, but she was a she was a quality heel. Her look and her move set and her intensity is very end game boss meant like attitude. No pun intended there with related to Sasha Banks, but she looks and feels like the final bad guy you face in a video game. Like Brock. And yes. I think we've made that comparison before. Yeah. Brock is end game boss material. Shayna is that for the women. And uh, I, I, again, this, I don't think this is a reflection of her wrestling quality, but they are the worst tag team. And yeah. It's, and it's bad on a lot of levels. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. And they, and they continue to team as well. As you said, they are the champions and ugh. It was it was looking so good for the women's tag titles earlier on in the year because for so long we were just like oh come on like these that you've brought these in there's there's no 
there's no, there's no even attempt to give these things prestige. You're just going to nope. keep them on Asuka yep. and, and Kyrie for however long, but then Asuka will just go off and do single stuff. So Kyrie's just essentially just a a holder of these two belts, the the keeper of the belts, not doing anything else, just making sure they're still shiny and that nobody's nicked them. Um, yeah. And then Bailey and and Sasha got in the mix, uh, Bliss and Cross got in the mix, and things started to start you know started looking up, and then like you said. In comes Nia, in comes Shayna. Terrible. Derailed. So I would say that's that that is a very well deserved award. Um, but I get the flip side of that. Again. <laughs> I get to deliver the 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 wonderful best tag team award. And we do have a, a couple of nominations, a couple of nominees. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, shock horror and uh <laughs> shock horror. the the nominees nom- the nominees the, nom- nom- the nominees are new day uh they are <laughs> new day new day uh the, the nominations are new day whammy street profits whammy ftr whammy the undisputed era whammy imperium whammy and omega hangman whammy and and the winner is winners are FTR. Ooh, clap it up for FTR. Mm. A lot of good tag teams there. It's one of those things where I feel. I mean, yes, there are some good tag teams here. Like that, there is without a shadow of a doubt, there really is. But many, many moons ago, it would have been really hard to pick a winner. Mm-hmm. And like you know, like as as you said, you know, Vince is no longer really interested in tag team wrestling, which is an absolute shame because I love tag team wrestling. I love everything about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nice to see that AEW are giving it a focus, which is exactly why. An AEW tag team is the recipient of this award. And again, I haven't, of course, been keeping up with AEW that much. I was very excited when I did see FTR debut in AEW. I was very, I was like, this could be, I think, in fact, I actually think it was. I think it was the catalyst for me tuning in for a few weeks. That it was. Uh, That um, it was. Because I was a huge fan of the Revival. Massive, massive fan of the Revival. Um, so I was, I was stoked to see them just wrestling in general. I, don't, I wouldn't have cared what promotion they went to, to be completely honest. I was just happy they were back in, uh, back amongst it. Um, but as the resident AEW watcher here on the show, um, explain the reasoning for this for this pick. They're good. <laughs> and the next award. <laughs> next award. No, they've... AEW's tag team division is tremendous. They're... Literally, like every team, the way they booked them, and they, and that's even considering they kind of like broke up Penta and Phoenix a little bit. But there's just so much quality top to bottom, and adding FTR, who are a quality tag team in their own right, and allowing them to work with these other teams, they just had an impact from day one. Their debut was good, the storyline was good with how they were cool with the Young Bucks, but you knew what was going to happen and what was going to come, and then how they won the belts and what developed after. They've just They've just nailed it. They are – we hear all the proverbial and, like, old-school verbiage and labels of, you know, how they're like an old-school tag team and everything they do. But their matches just have so many callbacks to earlier tag teams. Al- aligning them with Tully Blanchard was a great move. And their look, the intensity, they have just – every match that they're in and they're a part of just feels like a big-time thing. And they've had quality match after quality match, whether it's an eight-man tag – where they're teamed up with another team, or it's just them versus any of the other teams they've competed against. They've nailed it. And like you said, as the Revival, they were a quality team in NXT for the longest. And we really thought they were going to be something on the main roster. And shock horror, they, to steal your phrase there, they never really got the chance. They fizzled out, and they go to AEW, and they've done really well. Granted, the 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 entirety of this list, again, New Day, Street Profits, FTR, Undisputed Era, Imperium, and Kenny and Hangman, they've all done well, respectively. But the 
the fight, the big fight feel that FTR adds and has combined with the quality and the way they deliver is the reason that they are the best tag team of 2020 and yeah, our recipient of the whammy for best tag team. Can't argue. Cannot argue with that. Um, and there wasn't much arguing with this next award either. No, surprise, surprise. It's another worst one. <laughs> you get the, uh, the honors, <coughs> excuse I me, do. of delivering the worst storyline award for the yep. 2020 yep. whammy awards. Yep. I am very passionate about this one. I'm going to announce it and then go into a bit of a rant because it still pisses me off. So the nominees for Worst Storyline here in the 2020 Dow Pod Whammies are the Lana Bully Angle, making another appearance after being on Cringe. Raw Underground. (laughs) So stupid. (laughs) Eye for an eye. That whole storyline, not just the single moment of Ray. (laughs) Having his eye removed, and we can incorporate but, everything that is still going on with this bloody storyline. It all it's still bad. <laughs> yeah, God. Braun Strowman versus Bray Wyatt, terrible and unrewarding, and Retribution, and the winner. is retribution stupid and dumb they are supposed to be intimidating and have some sort of impact but they're nonsense they are like hallmark cookie cutter bad guys that are supposed to seem intimidating just because they wear black and wear masks and gave themselves stupid names we knew it was mia yim from the moment she came but we were supposed to act like it wasn't her majority of the wrestlers in the group are terrible mustafa ali is sweet but other than that the group sucks How are you supposed to be about revenge and retribution like your name says and you're out here doing friggin' social media and Twitter and Instagram and then you sign a contract to work for the company that you're trying to take down? You're literally – just everything is a contradiction and it sucks. They're supposed to be intimidating and they're out here basically friggin' like – that'd be like if the baddest gang in the baddest city in the world was like, oh, well, what do they do that's so terrible? It's like, well, last night – they went to someone's house, and you're like, yeah. And they're like, and there was about 30 of them. And you're like, yeah. And they're like, well, they went to this person's house. Yeah. And they threw toilet paper on their trees. <laughs> That's not a, that, who, what? Who fucking cares? They're supposed to be these terrible, like, oh, this guy, he's, oof, he's the nastiest guy I've ever seen in my life. Oh, well, what happened? Well, he, like, tripped this old lady this one time. <laughs> oh, my God. What a monster. What a savage. What a, what a, what a monster. <laughs> I kid, should we lock him up and give him the Hannibal Lecter mask? Well, you know what? Then that's another thing. They'd probably give somebody. That's just so stupid. So dumb. This stupid angle of how this intimidating, revolution based group is out here toilet papering trees and houses, and we're out here supposed to fear them because, just because they switched their. And we know who's under the masks. We can tell. Stupid. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. You know, because you know what I hate even more? I love stables and I love groups. And that's one of my favorite things about New Japan. And for so long, give me a group, give me a stable in WWE that means something. And finally, we get a group and it's friggin' Retribution. That sucks. That's like being that's like dying of thirst and somebody giving you a glass of warm milk that's been expired for a year and a half. <laughs> that sucks. Sorry. I feel a type of way. I I I, I can't even add to that. <laughs> it's so spot on. It's unbelievable. But I will I was going to say I'm going to throw a positive comment on there, but I guess it really isn't. Um for a little... It also makes me even more mad. I feel Mustafa Ali is a positive. He's sweet, and I feel bad that he's associated with this. Yes, that's that's what I was going to say. Um, it's it has so much potential and had so much potential, but I I don't know. It's just so strange. Why you would go the route of calling somebody fucking ball bag and um jock strap and all that stuff dick sandwich or whatever the fuck their names are (laughs) slap dick or slapjack or whatever the hell i just don't understand it you know dijakovic on his own is a pretty 
imposing figure. And they went, oh, you know what? You know what will make this better? We'll shave your head and give you a stupid mask. And just Dio Madden, or whatever his name is, who is now G Sport or something, whatever his name is. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, I, just, I just don't get it. I, when it was, when it was, they first came in, I was actually a bit, in, I was intrigued. Because I was doing my live streams of SmackDown at this point. And when it first happened, I was like, you know, this kind of sucks. But at the same time, like, it could have legs. It could go somewhere. And then they started to hone in on the actual group that would become. I mean, I I think they still, like, throw, like, these random members of Retribution out there every now and then. Um, Sucks. But it just, yeah, it... Even your piece on Dijakovic there, you had a guy, uh, a bit of a spoiler for later in the episode... One of our nominations for best match was Keith Lee versus Dijakovic from NXT Portland. You got a guy who was in one of the best matches of the year, one of the coolest feuds of the year, who was excelling on NXT, and you bring him up, give him a stupid mask, change his name, and include him in this stupid-as-hell storyline. Mm-hmm. You took a guy who had a unique look and a cool gimmick and uniqueness to him, and he's a good wrestler who was killing it in NXT, and you bring him up, to throw him in this stupid thing. We're forced to feast our eyes on this bullshit. So stupid. Way to work that in there. That was well played. Nice. Yeah. Just so... It's just, And it's just... It, this one is so WWE for me. It's just... there. It's so lacking bite and intensity and just anything that matters. Again, this like... Oh my god, this renegade group. And they're out here just like, you know, scribbling on the walls. <laughs> what madness. Oh god, however are we going to wipe the crayon off this wall? Like, it's just so... They don't even win any of their matches, really. No, they suck. Yeah. They just, they don't do anything. And again, what's the, like, if you're going to have them be on the roster or have them sign that deal, whatever the hell. Have them win something. Have them do something. Have them hold the belts hostage that they keep winning. Or just some crap. And instead they just keep picking on like – you. even now or a couple weeks ago they were going after Ricochet or picking on Ricochet. Like that matters. You already screwed over Ricochet by making him look weak against everyone he faces. And now they're – oh, like now we're going to pick on Ricochet. Oh, man. Way to show everybody how intimidating you are by picking on like the weakest dude in the area. Like how – let him go after Drew McIntyre. And feud with McIntyre and do something crazy to him. Like, put him through a car windshield. Or do anything other than just, like... Set him on fire. Yeah. <laughs> Set him a play. <laughs> like, just... You can't... You can't have both. You can't have this soft, cookie-cutter nonsense. And then at the same time, like, we're supposed to be, like, intimidated. And worried. No. It just... It's just all a fail. And it doesn't yeah. make sense, and it's foolish and annoying, and their names are dumb, and I'm I'm angry. Congratulations, Retribution, for winning worst storyline. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you guys <laughs> sucks. So I don't know whoever wrote this sucks. Not as a person, I guess, just like as what you do in your, <laughs> your job. <laughs> uh, but on the flip side, I I, more I, positivity. To I love the, I love the flip side. It's great. It's a great place to be. I have the honors of delivering the best female award for the 2020 Whammy Awards. And we uh, this list could have been longer than Jericho's fucking Thousand and One Holes or whatever it was. Oh, uh, oh I love... <laughs> I love that promo so yeah, it's much. It's so good. Arm you... bar. <laughs> have, have, you ever, do you, have you ever seen the payoff of that when Malenko finally comes back? No. Oh, my God. You need to... <laughs> to go on a small tangent here, you need to watch that. D. Malenko, so there's like a cruiserweight battle royal. The winner gets to face Jericho. And oh, I got goosebumps even thinking about it. So again, Jericho has been like taunting Dean Malenko for months <laughs> and months and insulting him, insulting his dad, just everything. And we're not hearing or seeing anything from Dean Malenko. So they have this cruiserweight battle royal, and Malenko comes back as this masked luchador, Ciclope, and it comes down to him and Juventud Guerrero 
at the end. And Hooventude, like, knows it's Malenko under there. So he just pats him on the chest and jumps over the top rope and eliminates himself. And Jericho comes into the ring like, what the hell is this? What the hell is going on? And Malenko takes it, because the mask has a wig attached to it, and Malenko takes off the mask and turns around. So, oh, I got goosebumps. And the crowd pop is massive. Because, again, this was before, like, there wasn't any hints. There was no social media. There was no, like, Reddit or anything where it was like, yo, like, I heard Malenko's coming back. To, it was none of that. And the pop is massive. It's so good. I will look that up. That just one match of the year. Armbar. Armbar. Man of a thousand five holes. Oh, it's so you need you need to watch that. It's so dope. Continue. Sorry, I got distracted and excited. I needed something to brighten my spirits after how angry I got at this <laughs> stupid retribution. Armbar. Arm. So such a good. You're saying it, you're saying it like a pirate. Arr. Arr. Well, it's the, it is the dits on wrestling podcast after all. Um. The only only podcast probably hell yes uh the so the uh, nominees for um best female are io shirai sasha banks bailey oscar rhea ripley shotzi blackheart and candice larray and the winner is just Sasha Banks. I argued this one. You did. I'm, I'm fine with it. She was a very, very close number two for me, but I'm fine with it because she's been fantastic. Again, to your point, every we could have listed more. Any, I, I leaned towards EO and Sasha, but any one of these girls could have won for best female of the year, which is a real test. And ironically, most of them aside from Sasha and Bailey, Well, I guess, I mean, Sasha went to NXT for a bit. Um, most of them have been on NXT for this year, which, again, is another credit to the quality of NXT. But, yeah, they've all killed it in one way, shape, or form. But I don't think you can argue with Sasha being number one. She's had a great year. I, I think what pips Sasha over EO is the storylines that she's been involved in. I think that's what pushed her over the line for me. Because, like, EO Shirai, like, we say it all the time, and I think I think it's actually universally accepted, to be honest that she is one of the best wrestlers on the planet, male or female. Mm -hmm. And she's put on some great matches this year. Of course, she's finally won the NXT women's title, which we were very happy about when that happened. Very. But Sasha Banks has had the whole Bailey thing constantly throughout the year. Um, you know, whether it be, you know, teases of, of, of dissension, tension, whatever you want to call it. Um, to the actual implosion, which we've been waiting years for, yes. um, which was frustrating. But how it all actually played out, I'm glad we were. In fact, I, I wish it went a little bit longer after Bailey attacked and, you know, we kind of waited to the Rumble or maybe even WrestleMania. But I understand that it's a long, long time to wait. Um, but what they did do with what they had was very, very good. Sasha mm -hmm. Banks, of course, became the SmackDown Women's Champion and defended successfully... For the first time in her first Can't events. Can't believe it. And she's still going strong. Like she's yep. she's set up for this feud with with Carmella now. And I think I honestly think it's going really well. Um and I, I just hope that they continue this push with her and don't just go, mm, well, you know, she's had her time in the sun. Let's ah, let's just give it to Carmella now because she's come back and she's fresh. No, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Let's not do that. Um, and I think, yeah, I think Sasha Banks massively deserves it. She's been she's been really great on the mic. And I love, you know, what I really love about Sasha at the moment is the fact that yes, she's been she's she she's been a heel all year, and even though Bailey, a heel, turned on her, the natural course, and this isn't just WWE, this is across the board. You would say, oh, Sasha Banks is now a babyface. I don't think she is, mm -hmm. or at least she's towing the line. Yes. But she still has all of those heel tendencies, which is perfect. Like, why? Yes. It's one of those rare moments of consistency in WWE where they've gone, just be just because you've been attacked by Bailey, your best friend, um, viciously, you know, all that stuff, 
You're not just suddenly going to go smiling to the crowd and being this happy-go-lucky champion. Like, she's still Sasha Banks. She's still condescending. She's still a bitch. Yes. yes. And this is what, like, she's, yes. she's still the boss. This is what I love Whammy. about it. Whammy. And I think that's why she deserves it. I completely agree. But like, that's not think... to take anything away. Even with, obviously, Bailey nominated for the award of well. I mean, she, what a year she's had. Longest reigning SmackDown champion. Um, she's yeah. had a lot of good moments herself. Um, yeah, Asuka's had a good year. I mean, she's still the Raw Women's Champion. Maybe not as as good as it could have been, but she still had a good year. Rhea Ripley's still tearing up. Shossie Blackheart. You could have actually argued that she was, you know, a breakout star of the year. Um, you know, Candice LeRae has been solid as ever. You know, she had a really good match with Io Shirai at uh, Halloween Havoc. Um, you know, True. they're... They're killing it. The, the women in WWE are killing it. So we, like we said at the very start of this award, like we could have gone, so, like this list could have gone so so long. Um, but yeah, Sasha Banks is uh, is taking it for me. Can't argue. She's. I believe I've. No, I, I know I've said it before on this show. I think she is the best non-Japanese female wrestler in the world. All due respects to Bailey and Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair. But she's great in the ring, and I think, yeah, the storyline aspect, the promo work is really what sets her apart, and that's all in consideration for her best female, and yeah, she's well-deserving of it. I think I would still lean towards EO, but I have no problem with Sasha winning, and I, I support you in this decision, and I support her as the winner of the uh, best female in the 2020 whammies. Well done, Sasha. Well, I know you listen. Well done. She well does. done she's to you. Fan. <laughs> she's a huge fan. And now Boy. you... Yep. I mean, to be honest, this is probably going to be a short one because you, yep. we've pretty much already covered it. Um, yep. Worst female, Anthony. Worst female. Same thing. No fancy window dressings. Direct and to the point. Worst female. 2020 whammies. Nominees are Tamina, Shayna Baszler, Lacey Evans, Nia Jax. The winner... Last year, the reigning and defending worst female. <laughs> she continues her streak this year, Nia Jax. The thing that gets me with Nia Jax. Because, again, I, despite how vehemently passionate I am about it, I feel bad criticizing someone openly like that. I, I genuinely do. But the thing that gets me with Nia, and granted I don't know her, and I only see what's portrayed on TV and in social media and things, but she seems to revel in the fact that people are upset with how bad she is. And rather than get good, she stays bad and is a smug, arrogant mess about it. She And she doesn't get better. She's a dangerous worker. She almost killed Kyrie. She almost killed Charlotte Flair. And those aren't exaggerations. Like, she could have snapped Kyrie's neck when she threw her into the bottom turnbuckle like she did. She almost broke Charlotte Flair's shoulder and then almost broke her neck. She's bad. She's awful on the mic. She's bad in the ring. She's dangerous. She's lazy. And she's smug about her laziness and how unsafe she is for her peers. And I guess it's not necessarily holistically her fault because WWE continues to put her in that scenario. I used a bunch of analogies for retribution Nia Jax, my analogy for her is like she's a cashier at her dad's store and she doesn't know how to do math. <laughs> so the people at the checkout are owed $5.43 and she gives them like a quarter because she doesn't know how to add and subtract and read numbers. And guess what? If you can't add and subtract and you can't read numbers, you can't be a cashier. But because her daddy owns the store, she gets to be a cashier. She shouldn't be a cashier. She's bad in the ring. She's awful. And she doesn't get any better. She makes no marketable levels of improvement. She continues to sit and stay with that level of subpar performance. And again, it's not even just that she's bad. She's a danger to her peers. That should not be allowed. That should not be accepted, both by the company and by her. Get good. Be better. She's awful. Roasted. <laughs> boom, boom, roasted. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Got to get the office reference in there. Boom, roasted. That was really good. Boom, roasted. 
yeah, I, I, yeah, I can't, there's nothing you said that I can, I, I can add to there. Ooh, roast it. <laughs> That's such a good episode. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and how the, um, oh, what's the line? I can't believe I got this wrong. How the turntables turn. Yeah, my, how, my, no, my, how the turntables. That's it. I have the turntables because I'm doing a worst award now. I know. Europe. I I noticed this earlier. I was like, oh, I get to do best match. But the, I'm actually glad I've got worst match because. Oh yeah, because you feel a very. I mean, I, I feel strongly about this as well. But this one, this one hits your heart. Still does. Still does. Um, worst match. Oh boy. 2020 Whammy Awards. The winner, if you can call it that. Uh, well, actually, the nominees. <laughs> um. Brock Lesnar versus Ricochet in some kind of Saudi pay-per-view. Goldberg versus Bray Wyatt at that same event, I believe. Uh, Braun Strowman versus Goldberg, WrestleMania. Terrible. Daniel Bryan versus Sami Zayn. I hate to put those two together. Um, WrestleMania. The Swamp Fight from the the horror show of Extreme... Oh my god, that alone is terrible. Uh, From Extreme Rules. And... The joint Money in the Bank ladder match from Money in the Bank. Funny old thing. Make sure, make sure when you announce the winner here, you add the context of what this has done to you going forward about oh. this thing that oh. you love. You know, you know, you know what's yes. coming. You know what's coming. Yes. I'm not, I mean, I'm, yeah. The, the the winner slash loser <laughs> of this prestigious award Very is. Prestigious. Money in the Bank ladder match from Money in the Bank. <sighs> if you've been a listener of this show for a while, and maybe, you know, specifically around Money in the Bank this year, you'll already know my thoughts. And throughout the year, we've we've come back to it a couple of times. Um, so I'm not going to go too far into it, but... The whole. I'm gonna start. You know, I'm actually gonna start off on a positive note with regards to this because Hmm. the premise was interesting. Yes, at the very least, the 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 premise was interesting, despite the fact that you (laughs) you you had there was no there was no reason or rhyme for this, and I don't think anybody's picked this up, and it, it bothers me that I was the only person that went, "Hang on a minute, why is this even happening?" Because it's not like, "Oh yeah, we can't have." Money in the bank matches, the ladder matches in the in the performance center because you know, limitations, whatever. Earlier on in the night, we had a tag team ladder match. So why why are you doing it in Stamford, and why why are these people running through the building? Like I, I just don't. Yeah. You you had you had the place to do it. You had a ladder match early in the night for Christ's sake. Like there's there's no reason why you couldn't have been just held in the PC as standard. At, well, I say as standard for what it was the standard at the time. But no, they wanted to try something different. And you know, power to you if you want to mm-hmm. if you want to try something different, go for it. Like I said, the premise was cool. You know, they're going to make their way from what the ground floor of WWE HQ straight up to the roof where there's a ring set up. Cool premise. Potential. But from the very freaking moment this thing started, like, I I'm, I blow hot and cold with cinematic matches. Um, You know, you're going to find out in the next award, um, you know, when it's done right. But when it's done wrong... It is so wrong, and this was exactly that. The whole thing was stupid. The, 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 molding the two um, genders together, you know, I'm not against it, but just keep them separate. Like, why? Why are these people like? Oh, it was, it, they just did it just to add to the shit of the whole thing. Like, you know, if we if we have more bodies, that means we can have a bigger food fight. Get the fuck out of here. Like, it, Doink the Clown appeared who didn't look anything like Doink the Clown. Like, Brother Love showed up for some reason in the toilets. I, oh my god, I forgot about that. I 
Shayna Baszler seemingly disappeared. Alistair Black and Rey Mysterio got thrown to the streets below, which turned out to be <laughs> one level down. Like, it was so fucking stupid. Um, and th- for me, Money in the Bank ladder match is exactly that. It's a ladder match for a Money in the Bank contract. It is not a... 80% run through a building with... You, have you ever seen the movie Rat Race? Oh, yes. It was fucking like that. You got Mr. Bean running around. You got sh- freaking Seth Green running around. It C- Cooper Gooding Jr. is jumping on a bus full of old women driving around the fucking Stanford HQ. The whole thing was just so, like, slapstick. And I, I don't get me wrong, I don't mind slapstick, but when it comes to, like, this Money in the Bank stuff that I'm... I, I, it's one of my favorite freaking matches, and to see it result in such terribleness, it, it really does pain me. And then just have 20% of this match actually be the match that it should have been in the freaking first place. And, and for that bit to not even be good, they finally get to the roof. Half of the people don't even show up. And the, the, the women's side of thing just ends pretty much straight away. Um, with Asuka winning, which is fair enough, great winner, but she, the, the women then all disappear, they all go, and then it's the men's turn, and the way, the, the even just the way the winner is is determined is just straight up fucking stupid. AJ Styles grabs the case for me, winner. I don't care if you drop that thing, AJ Styles, you just won the briefcase just because he yep. fumbled it two seconds later and it happens to land in the hands of Otis, which, by the way, is the biggest fucking waste of time considering, oh, funny old thing, he is not the Money in the Bank. Uh, well, he's not Mr. Money in the Bank anymore. It is now The Miz, so it speaks volumes. The fact that it was fumbled out of AJ Styles' hands into Otis, who stood there, just like, Ugh! like, Ugh. The rules do not state that you must come down from the ladder with the briefcase or hey. with the title belt. A ladder match, you just need to get it off the hook. Exactly. That's the win. It's No one has ever taken it off the hook and descended the ladder to how, win. How, ladder. how many times do you hear, whether it be the money in the bank, whether it be titles, the moment it is unhooked, you get the bell. Correct. The, the, that, you that very moment that it is unhooked. Ding, ding, ding. And just because AJ Styles held it for two seconds and dropped it, what? Yeah, he loses. It's stupid. And it, the whole that whole thing, and to this very day, because I said this when we were doing our Money in the Bank review, it has tainted the Money in the Bank ladder match for me. I will not be able to take that seriously next year if there they decide is. to go the traditional route. There As I will try and enjoy it, but I will always be looking back and go, well, this is what you went with last year. I don't know why you did it. Like you, the money in the bank is something that excels every single. You throw like multiple people into a ladder match of varying skill sets, um, varying lef- levels of athleticism, and you're going to get a very, very good match. Mm-hmm. And the fact that they've gone, you know what? We're gonna gonna throw like the women and the men together. We're gonna have them run through this building in a rat race fashion. Then we're gonna have them go up on the roof. And not really do a match. It's, oh, it just winds me up. It's just tainted the match for me. And I, I hope that they put on an absolute barn burner next year. And I go, yeah, well, you've kind of restored my faith. But I can't look back on this favorably at all. And for me, there is absolutely no question that this is the worst match of the year and potentially one of the worst fucking matches I've ever seen. Uh, No argument from me. I think it's terrible. I thought the comedy wasn't comical. I thought it just did a disservice to the match. I thought it was hokey and dumb and the spots were dumb. The ending didn't make sense. I, I, I second this notion. This was my clear number one. Braun and Goldberg from Mania is... A decent enough two for me. And decent enough to the point I mean like it's close in terms of my <laughs> disdain. God, that match was really bad. But I think going I think what makes this the worst match, and maybe it's not the right lens to view it through, but I knew Braun and Goldberg was going to be terrible. And it was terrible. But to your point, the money in the bank match, you had all these 
opportunities to make it good. Again, even just like the whole thing of like putting it in WWE headquarters and that and being on the roof or whatever. Like there were really cool things you could have potentially done. Yeah. And instead you just made it this oh, this stupid jumbled mess, an overcomplication for something that was simple and made to be fun. And they WWE-fied it. They WWE-fied it. However you want to put it there. <laughs> and just ugh, made it a bungled mess. And Braun and Goldberg was also fair, very terrible. Legitimately terrible. But at least that was only terrible for like three minutes because that's how long the match was. This Money in the Bank match was like a half hour of crap. <sighs> Don't want to watch that ever again. No, I I <laughs> I won't. I mean I mean I'm not rewatching WWE stuff nowadays anyway, but it was just so this was immediately when we were going over this and going over nominees. Like I literally put this and I didn't even bother almost thinking of anything. <laughs> this was so bad, I was like, nothing will touch this. This is the winner, that's it. And I erased it from my brain that I didn't even include it in my nominees. Yeah, and I told you and you were like, Yes, you immediately Oh God. Terrible. So bad so bad but enough about that i'm i'm done with the money in the bank match until next year when they potentially could redeem themselves but i would be very surprised um you've been doing the worst stuff yeah i get to do a good one now but now you get to do well i would would you say that this is the award in wrestling yes match of the year yeah match of whatever is always like best match of the pay-per-view best match of the show best match. yeah that's always if when you leave a show with friends that's what you're talking about oh who do you think had the best match tonight yeah best match is always the biggest award let alone for the year yes and, and i get very, the honors i'm very honored i'm very honored to finally have a positive one to speak about and also <laughs> to have it be this one best match big deal 2020 dow pod whammy awards the nominees are AJ Styles versus The Undertaker in their Boneyard match. Kenny Omega and Hangman Adam Page versus The Young Bucks. Kenny Omega again versus Pac in an Iron Man match on Dynamite. Keith Lee versus Dominic Dijakovic, NXT Portland. The men's Rumble match from the 2020 Rumble. And Valter versus Dragunov from NXT whatever the hell you're up <laughs> <laughs> nice i was i was trying not to laugh because i knew i was gonna do that the whole time that i was going through the nominees it was so hard for you to not laugh so stupid <laughs> and the winner of best match 2020 dow pod whammies is Whammy. Omega versus Pac in their AEW Dynamite Iron Man match. This was a tough decision. This was not easy. This was not easy. There are quality matches listed here. We all like them for a variety of reasons. But oh boy, that Kenny Omega versus Pac Iron Man match. I said it when it happened back in February. I believe I said it on Twitter. I know I said it to one of my friends that this was the match of the year for me again in this universe in this wwe AEW universe and oh boy holy hell that tag team match also with kenny and hangman versus the young bucks is also very close with there um <clears throat> i mean they're all close. walter versus dragonov was phenomenal the men's rumble is great for different reasons aj styles and undertaker as much as the cinematic matches are kind of mad that was really fun and good i think all of these are worthy in some aspect but Oh, the Kenny Omega Pack match was un uh, unbelievable, just and, unbelievable. And admittedly, I will I will put my hands up here and say that I haven't watched it, which isn't really a surprise because you know I haven't really been on the AEW hype train this year because uh, I was pulling for the men's Rumble. But you, um, you, you know, you you made a valid point. You know, when it comes to it, it is a match. It is you know, it's the men's Royal Rumble match, but. It's not a traditional match, right. so it, I it it stands as a nomination. It stands as a nominee, but 
as an actual match itself. I would still go for it personally if I was to break the rules. Um, but I haven't. Se- but yeah, I haven't seen Kenny Omega versus Pac, so I can't it's say. It's amazing. Anything. And what's even more amazing to put things into perspective is this match with Kenny Omega and Pac. It happens three days before the Kenny Omega Adam Page Young Bucks match. <laughs> so three days before Kenny's going to put on this marquee match. He wrestles in an Iron Man match on Dynamite against Pac, and it's amazing. Unbelievable. Oh, boy. Great match. Match of the year. Fantastic. Is that in front of a crowd? Yes. And yeah, they that's are good. very amped for it. This is it, – oh, uh, This would have been just before. Correct. We would have gone it was, Yeah, lockdown. it was February. Because I was, I was in America in February. So, yeah, I think we were maybe three or four weeks out from – from yeah, lockdown. the shutdown. It yeah. was February 26th. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. So, yeah, probably about, yeah, probably about three or four weeks out. It just absolutely. If if you haven't seen it, go see it right now. Stop what you're doing. I don't care even if you're at work listening to us. Stop listening to us. Leave work. Quit <laughs> your job. Put your two weeks in, but don't give two weeks. Give immediate notice. <laughs> go home. Watch this match. And I know you're thinking like, oh, well, can't I just like – Watch it later or still keep my job and watch it. The answer is no, you cannot. I know you might think that logistically, but for reasons I can't disclose at this moment, you can't. Quit your job. Leave your family. Leave it all behind. Go watch this match now. It's amazing. I am I, I am actually going to take that advice. <laughs> I'm going to go <laughs> I've already quit my job. I'm gone. I've left. It's over. I left it all, left it all behind. <laughs> um, but, well, Jesus, there we go. We've, we've, we've made it. We've made it to the end of the Whammy Awards for 2020. Let's see what happened. Whammy. Oh, whammy. And we've managed to we've managed to restrain ourselves with the Whammies uh, we did. I didn't this think year. We did that either. We've done well. I'm proud of us. We've done very well. I I mean I love the Whammy Awards. It's that the thing I re- the thing I love about the Whammy Awards is that it actually started off as a Twitter thing for two years um, that I just did on my own personal page and then. Oh, you know, having a podcast, it just made sense to bring it on to here. And you were here for the first one as a guest. Yes. And here you are as official co-host doing the uh, the 2020 edition. Full circle. Yeah, I like it. Full circle. Yes, last year's when we recorded was when um, my neighbors, it was the second time we'd ever recorded anything together. And my neighbors downstairs were being extremely loud and I had to... I went to multiple rooms in the house (laughs) or in the apartment trying to figure out which one had no noise. And so I would just be like, what about this one? You'd be like, nope, still here. And I'd be like, all right, give me a minute. I'd go to another one and be like, what about this? And you'd be like, nope. And then I finally found the last one. I was like, what about here? And you were like, good. And I was like, all right. I was uncomfortable as hell. I was recording in an area I don't record in. But because there was no noise, I stayed there. (laughs) The things you have to do to get the right acoustics for a podcast. It's tough, man. (laughs) Oh, it's a tough life. It exactly. is a tough we life. Make, we suffer for our art. We do. We really do. Um, and that, oh, well, that sadly is the end of our 2020 as well. It is. Hmm. Our last, a little... our last episode. I mean, it, I mean, is it? We've only just come back from a hiatus, so it feels. I don't know. It feels a bit mm, like we we have a bit of momentum going, and we, you know we're stepping away again. But this. You know, it is the holiday period. You know, it's nice to have a break. And like we mentioned a couple of weeks back in our, uh, you know, welcome back. You know, this is this, this is what we got coming up kind of episode that we did. Um, I think it was two two weeks ago we did that one before uh, draft that. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's stuff that we want to focus on next year. There's stuff that we want to build on. There's new stuff that we want to dive into. It's nice to have a break to kind of get all of that refined and just have a picture of ourselves before we, you know, crack on with it and really start building this pod to why, what what we both think it can, uh, that it can be what that is at the moment. We don't know completely, but that's why exactly we're fleshing out. That's why we have, that's why we have this break so we can, you know, go back and forth with ideas and go, right, well, this is 2021. It's a clean slate. Um, and this is the Dow pod. This is here. It is. This is what it is now. Uh, mm-hmm. But don't expect any major changes. That's, so don't don't get worried about that. You know, this is leaving the show. This is leaving the show. Anthony is anchoring it on his own. 
no, thankfully it's nothing that drastic. Um, yeah, it's just small, small tweaks, small tweaks. That's all. Um, but it's exciting stuff, and it's nice to have a break. Um, and I guess to that, with the break, with it being a, a break for the holidays, I mean, you know, we were, we already were given our little thankful address at the very, very um, head of the episode, but. Um, you know, we, again, I just wanted to say, you know, reiterate that point. You know, thank you to everybody who listens to this show. And, uh, well, yeah, I hope you have a good Christmas. I hope you have a good new year. And uh, we'll see you in 2021. Yeah, we will. And, and it'll be a big year for the Dow Pod. It will. Anthony, um, I, I guess, I forget, you know, I forgot to do the plugs, but I don't really care at this point. I don't really have anything to plug. Go, go, to, go to my Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash project it's. That's it. Yeah. That's, that's, that's my plug. Anthony, yeah. get, your, get your plug in and do the traditional Anthony goodbye. And then we will uh, close out 2020 with, well, nothing. Just with silence. Nothing. Just, silence. With just pure <laughs> silence. I am Anthony. How 2020, should, how 2020 know, right? should end. Just, I was silence. thinking that how apropos. Yeah, a thousand percent. I am Anthony, co-host here on the Dow Pod. Find me on Twitter at pro underscore underscore ant. That's pro two underscores A N T. You can also find me as the host of my own solo pod titled Disguise Coverage, part of the Cover One Sports Network, covering the Buffalo Bills. So if you're a Bills fan or an NFL fan, I do a lot of breakdowns and analysis of the Buffalo Bills and things in the NFL in general. So feel free to check that out. Check out Cover One. Check me out here on the Dow Pod. And you can find Disguise Coverage on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Facebook. Find me on the Twitter Find Dits on the Twitter. Find us on whatever platform or viewing service you are using to listen to the Dow Pod. And as Dits mentioned, I'm going to do the outro here. And normally I like to make a a big statement and have it lead up to just me saying, like, goodbye shortly. So I kind of, like, wind it up like I'm going to say something deep and thoughtful and meaningful. <laughs> and then I end up just saying, you know, a really short goodbye, and that's how the episode ends. But to piggyback on what Dits said earlier, I, I, I don't want to do that this time. Instead... I just want to say goodbye. <laughs> <laughs>